Okay then, this is uh, the feedback for question 12 from book 2 on um, cell structure. So this was a question really with lots of um, electron micrographs in where you had to identify various structures. Um, now before I start giving the feedback, um, I need to emphasize an important thing which I, I will mention um, in college. Um, quite a lot of you only answered the first part here, okay? Um, the question does carry on for uh, several pages, all right? Now, my guess is that you just haven't been bothered to turn over the page to see if the question continues, all right? So, um, a few of you only did the first part, which is um, not acceptable, really. Okay, you need to make sure that you complete the whole of the question, which means turning over the page to check if there's any more subsections to the question. Okay, um, that said, let's uh, go through the feedback then. Um, a and B, two organelles. A is a mitochondrion, B is the Golgi body. Uh, if we start with the Golgi body, again, the typical identifying features of the Golgi body are sort of this stack of sacs which are called cisterni and also um, lots of these vesicles surrounding the Golgi. So they're two of the key features you need to know to be able to identify a Golgi body. Uh, a then the mitochondria you know that's self-explanatory you should know that it has a double membrane which you can see there and these lines coming into the matrix of the mitochondrion are the uh, Christi uh, or the highly folded uh, membrane so that's what you had to do for part one you need to identify the organelles and then um, give the function. All right, so um, organelle A was the mitochondrion. Okay, now what you'll find is in the, uh, with my marking, if you had mitochondria there, I would have put a plus. Okay, which means it was a correct answer. Um, the function then, if you had the function right, I would have put another plus and then either a tick next to it or a tick down the bottom. The reason I do that is that um, it's only worth two marks, this question. So you get a mark for the structure being correct and the function. You don't get a mark for each. All right, so that those pluses just indicate where you got um, a correct answer. So, for the mitochondrion then, um, ATP synthesis. Okay, that should be straightforward. B, uh, Golgi body. Don't just put Golgi. You have to put Golgi body. There are other names it goes by. You can call it Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus. All right, but do not state Golgi on its own. Uh, the function of this, uh, you could have put modification of proteins. You could have put the addition of a uh, sugars to the proteins. You could have said produce glycoproteins. Um, they would have also allowed um, production of secretory vesicles, which are these structures, as I said earlier in the diagram. And they would have allowed... Um, synthesis or production of lysosomes okay so there's uh, various functions there of the Golgi body okay so uh, I'll put modification of proteins there we go so uh, if you got those two answers right you'd have had a plus and a plus and then a tick somewhere to give you the mark. Right, the next one, name a tissue which contains a large numbers of organelle A. Um, they would have allowed liver, muscle, nervous tissue there. 
Okay, so um, any one of those would have been fine. I think I also gave the mark for the uh, pancreas, uh, but it is best to stick to either liver, muscle or nervous tissue. Right, if we go on now to the next part, um, you've got a organelle there, which is the nucleus. All right. And uh, the question is asking you uh, to state two features of a nucleus that can be seen in this electron micrograph and their function. Right, well, to me, the obvious ones are um, this region here, which is the nucleolus. Okay. All right, that's an obvious feature. And nicely shown, I think, in this image are various nuclear pores. Okay, now they're the easiest ones to go for. Some people did um, talk about the DNA or the chromatin. All right, uh, that is an acceptable answer, but I think these are just the easiest ones to go for. So, feature when you could have had uh, nucleolus. All right, uh, the function of the nucleolus uh, is to uh, make ribosomes. Now, some of you were saying it makes messenger RNA. No, doesn't. Um, it's just uh, ribosomes. Uh, very often they would have would allow R RNA because R RNA is a component of a ribosome. Okay, so with regard to the nucleolus, don't say anything about messenger RNA. It's make ribosomes or to make ribosomal RNA, which is abbreviated to R RNA. Okay, um, the next one then, nuclear pore. Now, people were making silly mistakes with this one. Um, I've made it quite clear that when you talk about the nuclear pore, you have to mention a specific substance that moves through that nuclear pore. Um, so, if you just said the function is to transport materials out of the nucleus, no marks. You have to give an example of something that will move through that nuclear pore. Okay, so they would have allowed, allows um, messenger RNA to move her through. They would have allowed ribosomes as well. Okay, so um, allows ribosomes. To pass out of the nucleus. Okay, and that then would have uh, given you the function uh, mark. Right, um, if you did mention DNA or chromatin, um, that was allowed. You can see the chromatin within the nucleus, it's sort of the grey, darky background there. Um, so if you said chromatin, the function of that is that it provides the code or the instructions for protein synthesis. Okay. Um, they would have allowed as well, I don't think this is uh, one that anybody mentioned, but they would have allowed double membrane and the function of that is to actually hold or contain um, the DNA. All right, so there was that option as well. Okay, let's move on to part C now. Um, this is to do with the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, D is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so that's rough. Um, one of the reasons why is that you've got these ribosomes on the surface. It's got this sort of rough appearance. Uh, e, that would be the smooth um, ER, uh, where the structure is slightly different. So, um, what they're asking for now is to um, state two visible differences between D and E. Right, the obvious one, 
and the one that you should go for straight away is to state that D has ribosomes okay um, E does not all right now you have to be quite clear what structure you're uh, talking about if there's any uh, ambiguity in terms of you not put in the D or the E in your answer then you get no marks all right so you have to be clear what uh, diagram you're referring to in your answer uh, so that would have got you uh, one mark okay uh, the next one is to use the term cisterni all right which is what the um, that the folds and the structures within both types of endoplasmic reticulum are called um, so with D you can see that the cisterni are in nice parallel or regular lines it's got an ordered structure to it okay it's quite organized all right uh, with the smooth ER okay it's less organized okay um, and it's more open in terms of its structure so it doesn't form these sort of parallel lines all right so the next one there was to talk um, about the uh, cisterni so in D you should have said the cisterni are in uh, parallel lines okay um, but E is not alright so that would have been um, another acceptable answer there in terms of looking at the structures you could have put um, instead of saying but E is not you could have said that um, E is less um, organized okay it looks generally it looks a little bit more messy if you like compared to the rough endoplasmic reticulum okay so I think part C was perhaps the hardest part of this question uh, but I hope um, this feedback um, has helped for question 12